<laughs> George was conducting an important experiment, testing the bounce factor of the living room furniture. <laughs> this part of the couch made a different sound. That wasn't the couch. It sounded big. It sounded heavy. And it came from up there. You must have heard our new neighbor walking around. He moved in last week. What George had heard seemed heavier than footsteps. What are you doing? George, you must have heard our neighbor walking. Th that's all it could be. It's not like he's got some wild animal up there. The man with the yellow hat lived with George. So why couldn't the new neighbor live with an animal? What kind? Of course, the new neighbor had brought home an elephant. <laughs> the man with the yellow hat had to hear this. George? You, you dreamt about an elephant? <laughs> oh, um, no more nature books before you go to sleep, George. They're obviously giving you strange dreams. This is better bedtime reading. The happy, sleepy monkey. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> this new sound certainly wasn't an elephant walking around. It was an elephant that was doing what? sleep at all last night. George never realized there were so many sounds in the world. He'd never listened hard enough. to the apartment upstairs, where the new neighbor lived, with his elephant. <laughs> Bringing home a new rug is always a one-man, one-monkey job. So George was happy to have his friend, the man with the yellow hat, around to help. 
Uh, I'll take the front, George, and you make sure the back doesn't hit anything or drag on the ground. <laughs> but hold on, we all clear back there? <laughs> okay, I'm putting it down. <sighs> Whew, thanks, George. Boy, I am so happy I got this rug. George liked the way the big tube looked in the room. <laughs> looked good flat, too. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Wiseman was right. It's a perfect rug. Oh, I've got to take a picture to show her. Oh, wouldn't you know? I forgot to buy batteries. Okay, I'll be right back. Be a good little monkey. <sighs> what a great rug. <laughs> Hauling a rug always makes a monkey thirsty for grape juice. A lot of grape juice. The rug made for good toe squishing. <laughs> so it would probably be fun to jump on. <laughs> this wasn't good. George had to get that juice off the rug. Now what? <laughs> soap. Soap clean stuff. So more soap, clean stuff more. Bubble bath would make it smell good. Definitely too much soap. Okay, perfect. But there was something missing. Water! today. Well, I'd like to buy this. It'll go perfectly with my great new rug. Wait, wait, these legs. Hmm. Yeah, I'm afraid they'd snag my great new rug. Oh, I could fix that. Swap those legs out for ones that are less snaggy. Just take a few minutes if you don't mind waiting. I can't wait to get a picture of that footstool on my new rug. Ah. <sighs> Oh, uh, did I mention I just got a great new rug? <laughs> George had to get all those suds out of the house so he could see if the rug was clean. George was happy he spotted the glass of juice. That could have caused a real mess. Ah. Watching for the man with the yellow hat to come home was easy for a sharp-eyed monkey like George. Because nobody else was that yellow. <laughs> well, almost no one. Ha, 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 ha. 
seeing the man was great. But seeing him with a present was even better. <laughs> Well, hello. How was your morning? Were you a good little monkey? <laughs> That's my monkey. Oh. <laughs> uh, hold on, George. That present's not for you. Huh? It's for Professor Wiseman's birthday. You can see what's inside when she opens it. Uh, tonight at dinner. <laughs> Dinner was years away. Maybe just one peek now. If you really want to unwrap something, come in the kitchen. <laughs> Here, you can pretend the orange peel is gift wrap. You'll be helping me in unwrapping too. <laughs> orange skin didn't feel like gift wrap. But there was something good inside. <laughs> Maybe that thick skin was there to hold back squirts. Now, the onion head skin that felt like gift wrap. <laughs> but it didn't smell like any present. <laughs> and no wonder they keep cheese wrapped up. <laughs> These coverings were all different, but they hid the same thing. Yeah. Something smelly. But that couldn't be the same reason the present was wrapped, could it? George, could you please peel me one apple? <laughs> this was much better. The apple smelled good. Uh, George, after you've done one apple, leave the bowl of unpeeled fruit out, okay? Those are Professor Wiseman's favorites that I bought especially for her birthday. Um, George, could you pick up my pants for me? They're being altered at the department store. Don't worry, we won't open it without you. Phew. <laughs> Have a seat. I'll be back in one moment with the pants. The man with the yellow hat was right. This errand had completely taken George's mind off the... Fancy, beautiful wrapped present. <laughs> nothing to eat, nothing to smell, nothing. All George uncovered was a mystery. Why just wrap empty boxes? George couldn't wait for his newspapers to be sun-dried. George had promised Bill he'd deliver all these papers. If it didn't get done, Bill could lose his job. Maybe the man with the yellow hat knew where to get dry papers. George forgot to watch where he was going. <gasps> Fortunately, he was wearing a helmet. Unfortunately, the bike was not. The walk home was a long one for George. 
Hi, George. Are you looking for someone to repair that wheel? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> no, not Leslie. Come on. <laughs> you think you could get George's wheel rolling again? I know I can. <laughs> this. It seemed to be going well, but George felt he should help. A wrench. George knew how to use that. Hey, <gasps> ah! That looks good. Now let's fix these spokes. <laughs> Terrific! Huh? Next, we check balance. Ah. Yeah, looks good. Now the tube. All right. Aha! Uh -huh. Just needs a patch. That wrench. <laughs> oh, thank you, George. <laughs> All we need now is some air in the tires. George hadn't helped as much as he wanted to. <laughs> Perhaps one or two minor adjustments. He did, however, know how to use a pump. Ah. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. George rushed home to tell the man with the yellow hat about his paper problem. George, I have a surprise for you. Huh? Oh, George, Bill came by. Apparently, some people didn't get their newspapers today. Yep, one lady saw a duck riding in a newspaper boat, but it wouldn't get out and let her read the headlines. <gasps> Suddenly, George remembered he hadn't told the man with the yellow hat about his paper problem. <laughs> Hey, hold on, George. How about we just buy a few dry papers and deliver them right now? Yeah. And so, George was able to finish his route just like a real paper boy. Maybe I should buy a new bike for myself, too. <laughs> Sorry. George had been drawing all morning. But when he drew too long, he got a cramp in his foot. <laughs> That's funny, a banana driving a car. Oh, it's me. Well, George, I am honored to be in such a great work of art. Uh -huh. Hey, and you know where great works of art belong? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. On the refrigerator. Huh. What we need to hold that up is a magnet. Uh -huh. Well, let me see. I remember having one somewhere. Oh. <laughs> well, this is the only one I got. Uh -huh. 
Hmm, you're right. It really doesn't do it justice. Okay, we have a mission. Go buy great magnets so you can hang that. <laughs> George, careful, don't swing from the... <laughs> refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, okay. Two missions. Magnets, refrigerator door handle. Hi, Professor Wiseman. <laughs> Hi, guys. Wow, you're in the wrong place. That belongs in an art museum. <laughs> We're here to buy cool magnets to stick George's picture to the refrigerator. <laughs> Say, while you're here, do you want to see our new magnetorium? Yeah. Oh, were you talking to George? George was in a hurry to get home and hang up his drawing. But he was curious. Welcome to the Magnatorium. <laughs> oh, I think magnetism is my favorite invisible force. George knew he could spend all day here. But they were on a mission. Ooh, ooh. Hmm? Oh, right. <laughs> uh, we'll come back another day and play with all this stuff. Uh, before you go, try to touch this magnet against the back of the cars. <gasps> now try to touch it to the front. <laughs> Everything isn't magnetic, just certain metals. Huh? Oh, George, check this out. This isn't a magnet, see? Huh? But anything attracted to a magnet can be turned into a magnet by rubbing the magnet on it like this, in the same direction. It's all so amazing. Oh, huh? I almost forgot this. What amazing thing does that do? This? It's the pizza pan you lent me. I'm returning it. Thanks. <laughs> George was still in a hurry to buy some small magnets Ooh. and get home. <laughs> Most mornings, George went out on the porch to find the paper. Ooh. This morning, the paper found George. Sorry! George wished he could be a paper boy someday. <laughs> but he didn't even know how to ride a bike. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this? Oh, why, this was my bike when I was a boy. I sure had fun. But it was a long time ago. <laughs> you want to try it? Yeah, it's gonna need a little work first. <laughs> now to blow up the tires. This was something George could do. He'd blown up lots of balloons. <laughs> Let's try this air pump. Ooh. 
<laughs> Be my guest. George liked knowing the man with the yellow hat was holding him up. By the third day, <laughs> oh. he rode so fast the man with the yellow hat couldn't keep up. <laughs> Very good, George. I think you're ready to ride on the road. <laughs> now remember, always watch where you're going, stay on the right side of the road, and signal turns, like this for left, and this for right. <laughs> That's it. Oh, and be a good little monkey cyclist. Bye-bye. <laughs> Like most cyclists, George loved the wind blowing in his fur. <gasps> For the first time ever, he was even faster than bunnies. so fast, but I'm going to be late for school. Hey, could you finish my paper out? <laughs> Trusted with a paper route, it was like George's wish had just been granted. It was a special day for George, a visit to the museum, but first, a stop at Piscetti's for a sweet Sunday treat. <laughs> George, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> Cannoli, a brown, crunchy shell with a delicious filling. <laughs> See? Two, just for us. Hey, Noki, you have your own house now? looking for cannoli. The last two got taken. <sighs> I'm sorry. I don't make any new cannoli today. I'm too upset. What's going on? <sighs> Mio caro gnocchi. She has been sneaking into the main room and scratching up at the seats. It's a disaster. You see? Look what she has done. Can you believe a little gato, a sweet little kitty, could do such damage? <laughs> oh, I must ban gnocchi from the restaurant. Oh, well, we saw the house you built her. It's very nice. Grazie! I plan to add a second story, eh? Oh, that is gnocchi. She wants to come in. Oh, I feel terrible. She only wants to come in because you say she cannot. Oh, typical cat. This kitchen is in torment. I suspect there will be no cannoli until this problem is solved. Eh? Back outside. Oh, 
Don't worry, George. I I'm sure they'll solve the problem. <laughs> At the museum, George was too distracted to concentrate. <gasps> ah, Professor Wiseman. Hey, guys. Welcome to my new exhibit. It's called How Great Scientists Got Their Great Ideas. These are portraits of some great scientists. Isaac Newton, Benjamin Franklin, Marie Curie. And Albert Einstein. Once you think like a scientist, George, you can solve almost any problem. Huh? George had a problem. He wanted cannoli. <laughs> you know, scientists think about problems and get ideas to solve them. They observe, then collect information. <laughs> and if that information doesn't help solve their problem, they observe more and get a different idea. <gasps> oh, dear. Excuse me. Young man, get down from there. George wondered what great scientists would do if they were monkeys who had no cannoli because gnocchi had scratched the booths. I say, do we know for certain that she did it like the chef believes? You must think about what you observed. George did see gnocchi scratch the door, but could she have scratched the booth too? You observe does not support the chef's idea about Gnocchi making the scratches. If George could prove Gnocchi was innocent, Chef Pischetti would be happy, and George would have cannoli. <laughs> oh, I love cannoli! George had to observe more. Maybe it came from something no one had ever seen. some undiscovered dinosaur. You're a scientist now, George. Huh? But how could a monkey figure out exactly what an undiscovered dinosaur looked like? <laughs> Hi, George. <laughs> oh, I dropped some puzzle pieces. I can't finish the elephant without all the pieces. The pieces George found didn't look like pieces of elephant. <laughs> you found them! <laughs> well, now you can't tell what you've got by looking at only one piece. You have to put them all together. See? So to see what his discovery looked like, George had to find the rest of the bones. If he found one bone in the park, the rest must be close by. <laughs> Charky kept treating George's discovery like a toy which may explain why you never see any dog scientists. <laughs> she didn't have it. Her paws were dirty. She buried it. Another bone. <laughs> this was George's very own dinosaur dig site. A dinosaur waiting for millions of years to be found. But something wasn't right. The bones were all alike. Hi, 
Hi, George. What do you have there? <laughs> you found all these? <laughs> here in the park? <laughs> Sharky, so this is where you've been hiding all your chew toys. <laughs> Ha, those are Charky's missing bones, all right. <laughs> and we just bought her a brand new one, too. <laughs> so that's why Charky treated George's discovery like a toy. <laughs> what a find! We've been looking for her missing toys all year long. Thanks for finding him, George. <laughs> oh, you made a helpful discovery, George. Who knows? Maybe someday you'll even dig up a dinosaur. <laughs> we gotta go. Bye bye. See you, George. Have fun, George. Hey there. <laughs> Have you been digging up my park? Then you've got a hole to fill in. <laughs> <laughs> Discovering dinosaur bones was harder than it looked. But even if the bone George found wasn't a real dinosaur bone, it was pretty close. You're not Dr. Gazun. Are you really a doctor? <laughs> I've been waiting so long, I don't even care. I have this terrible sneeze. And it goes away, it comes back, it goes away. The sweater was muffling the sounds inside. There was one way to fix that. <laughs> uh, should I keep breathing? It might help if I take this off. Monkey, Do doctor, monkey. <laughs> oh, I'm not cured. <sighs> I'm allergic to this sweater. You're the best doctor I've ever had. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because you're a monkey. George had cured his first patient, but then. Doctor, is that you? A doctor never ignores a patient in need. <laughs> hey, you're a monkey. <laughs> my problem is my arm, not my throat. I'll wait for Dr. Gazoon, because you're a monkey. Did you hear that weird noise, too? What is that? Shh. I've had the hiccups for two weeks. I get Stop! Well, aren't you gonna help me? What kind of... Monkey Doctor, are you? Shh. That's him. That's the monkey that tried to make me go, ah! He's 
a genius monkey doctor. He discovered my allergy. <coughs> George, do you have permission to be a doctor? Shh. <coughs> <coughs> What's going on out here? George, what are you wearing? You haven't performed any operations, have you? <coughs> what was that? You don't know? I figured it was your medical machinery. Shh. Aha! <laughs> Dr. Gazooned. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Hello. I, I came in here during my break to play just one round. I, I must have lost track of time. Nothing feels as great as monkey curiosity satisfied. Oh my, my hiccups are cured. <laughs> George liked the stethoscope and doctor coat so much that Dr. Baker let him keep them. <laughs> and though Hunley was grateful the lobby was peaceful, he started to worry that someday, George might really be his doctor. It had been a particularly rewarding day at the going out of business store. George couldn't imagine how this day could get any better. Or maybe it could. Mabel's department store had added a fresh, homemade candy counter. <laughs> oh, I don't know about you, but I simply can't walk away from blue candy. <laughs> but I can't carry this into Mabel's. The pyramid sort of enhances the pinkness, don't you think? Mm -mm. I'm working on a rhombus shape, but it keeps falling over. A rhombus? It's a work in progress. Anyway, welcome to Kaylee's Candies. I'm Kaylee. We'd like four small boxes. Great! This is my first order today. No one could wait till they got home to try the chocolates. Ooh. Hey! <laughs> hey, George's box has four, not six. You got shortchanged. He can have two of mine. I just wanted to taste anyway. So can I have your other three? George didn't think it was fair for anyone to sacrifice. <laughs> there was only one right thing to do. Uh, oh, nuts. <coughs> oh, you want to buy two more? <laughs> You're missing two. <laughs> I know you didn't eat them. <laughs> you most certainly haven't eaten any chocolate. Boy, you sure have nice teeth. <laughs> Pick any two you want. Sorry I shortchanged you. I put some of these boxes together at home and my cat distracts me. <laughs> Dear, I need to pick up more stock, but I can't just leave. Hey, would you mind watching the counter? <laughs> You're obviously extremely honest, and I've hardly had any business all day. All you have to do is watch the chocolates while I'm gone. <laughs> Thank you so much.
mysterious rhombus. George wondered if he could make a rhombus. It didn't seem hard. <laughs> Why did other shapes stack better? Maybe they went together by shape, not color. George concentrated on his work. <clears throat> George hadn't expected any customers. I want a box of chocolates for my wife. Do you have mints? Are these mints? Well, what are those? <laughs> Uh, that doesn't look like a mint. The next blue one had the same filling, and it still wasn't mint. Well, don't you have a flavor chart? Summer afternoon. The perfect time for a game of Find the Pigeon. <laughs> okay, George, playtime's over. Time to clean your room. <laughs> you can play with Compass after you clean your room. George. <laughs> I don't think you'll fit in the bird bath, George. You're definitely a tub monkey. <laughs> okay, time to brush your teeth and hit the sack, George. Even though being a monkey was the greatest thing ever, pigeons didn't have to do what anybody told them. George, time to clean your room, take a bath, wash your ears, brush your teeth, go to bed, wake up, make yourself breakfast. So the next morning, George made up his mind to live like a pigeon. It turned out that birds had special pecking equipment. didn't come with wings. <laughs> Plus, pigeons didn't have to wait for the don't walk light. George had lost his flock. To be a pigeon, you had to fly. Uh, 
Being a cat looked like a lot less work than being a pigeon. Now this was the life. And no one made Gnocchi clean her room. Plus, cats took a bath wherever they wanted. Whenever they wanted. A cat bath was okay. If you didn't mind a hairy mouth and a spitty face. Maybe being a cat wasn't for George either. Here were lots of animals who didn't have to clean their rooms or brush their teeth. Surely George could find one he could be. Like a chameleon. They could change color effortlessly. <laughs> Monkeys couldn't. <laughs> Fish never had to stop playing to take a bath. <laughs> but George wasn't good enough at holding his breath to be a fish for very long. <laughs> what else would make a bathtub feel more like home to a turtle? Frogs. George, need any help there? <laughs> oh, these? Here you go. The flippers look like frog feet. <laughs> Wait, you can't run into the... Uh, never mind. Well, you're in anyway. You'll want this too. <laughs> the flippers helped him swim fast enough to catch up with frogs. It also helped that the frogs had never seen another frog so big and hairy before. Now his tub even sounded like the turtle's home. Maybe sand and snails and frogs just weren't enough. George brought back all the green lake stuff he could find, even the slimy things. He'd accidentally caught a fish. The turtle had to like that. How could sand and snails and frogs and lily pads and slimy things, plus a fish, not be enough? The only thing the lake had that this tub didn't was Mr. Quint. Maybe a monkey could never make a turtle happy. Except by leaving it alone. So George decided to go back to what he was doing in the first place searching for Bill's lost disc. What he discovered was more than just a lost toy. <gasps> and they could hold their breath for a long, long time. Much longer than a monkey. What a day. I can't wait for a nice, long soak in the tub. Whoa! Who are you? <gasps> George, has it really been that long since I cleaned the tub, or did you do this? 
Everybody's back home. <laughs> I hope you've learned there's more to a happy home than just a dirty bathtub. Thinking back, George realized even though it would be fun to have worms living under his bed, <laughs> they'd be happier in their own home, dirt. Still, it was exciting to think new friends might turn up right in your own backyard. Or even under it. <laughs> 